Chris Ray here. We're going to be learning about DNA replication together for our Unit 4 Lesson 2 notes. Please make sure that you have your packet ready and a pencil or pen ready to write down. It's going to be important that at certain times we're going to pause the video and complete practices as we go along. Please don't wait until later to complete those. You want to use them now while everything is fresh on your memory and you've sort of chunked the information a little bit. Um, remember that we don't want to wait until the answers are given to us later on. That's not going to help us at all. And that's a big problem that some of us really struggle with. Second, there's going to be some things that I will say and reminders and hints that I might give you that are not on the slides. It will be very helpful to you for you to jot those things down too. You never know when a quick hint might make it a whole lot easier for you, not only on practices, but also on your quizzes in the future. Okay, let's go on and learn about DNA replication. DNA replication, unit four, lesson two. Please have your packet ready and get ready to write. We're gonna start our notes by answering a few questions about DNA replication itself. So first off, who? What organisms do DNA replication? Remember that DNA is located in all living things. It's actually one of the components or characteristics of life. So that means that at some point, they're gonna to need to replicate or duplicate or copy, those all mean the same thing, their DNA. So all living cells do this. The process, again, is copying all the cell's DNA. It's actually in its name. DNA replication, replicate means to copy. When? We've actually also already know this. Uh, we learned about this in unit two. Remember when we talked about interphase as a part of the cell cycle, it came right before mitosis. Remember we had to do interphase because we needed that S phase to copy and replicate all of the DNA so that when we actually split the cell, we were splitting the cell into, to create two cells that had the same amount of DNA. Now, this occurs in eukaryotes in the nucleus of the cell. Remember that bacteria, it happens in the cytoplasm. Bacteria also have slightly different types of DNA. It's circular rather than double, uh, again, double-stranded. So we're focusing on the eukaryotes for this unit. Why? Well, remember that all living things, they're going to grow, they're gonna develop, they're gonna to need to repair and replace their cells. And when they do that, they need DNA to be able to tell their cells what to do. So they'll need to replicate it so that they can create new cells. Remember, eukaryotes have a nucleus. It's a membrane-bound organelle that's in the cell, holds all that DNA. We'll definitely be talking more about this nucleus next lesson when we talk about protein synthesis. We also want to remember that interphase is the phase of the cell cycle that takes the longest. It's doing so much. And one of those things that it's doing a lot of is DNA replication. It's not something that happens very quickly. It takes time, and there are several steps to be able to do it. Let's talk about those steps. I want you to note that you need to be able to tell me each one of these four steps. You should be able to verbalize all of them without prompting. If you had to list all four of them verbally, you should be able to write them down. You should be able to. That's what I want you to practice. So let's go over the first one. Step one, DNA helicase unzips the double helix. Now, DNA helicase is an enzyme. We're going to talk about enzymes a little bit later, but we're going to remember helicase DNA because we're making DNA. Helicase, I want you to think the word hello. And we always start a conversation saying, hello, how are you? And um, that's always going to be the first step. So we do DNA helicase, and its sole job is to take the double-stranded helical DNA and actually split it. It breaks those hydrogen bonds holding the base pairs together, breaks those bonds and opens up the DNA to do DNA replication. So just like this. Ah, so again, DNA helicase is the one that actually breaks those bonds and unzips the DNA so that we can start the replication process. Step two, once the DNA, and you can see the DNA is unzipping, um, once it again is breaking apart and those hydrogen bonds are breaking, um, DNA polymerase, another enzyme, is going to then bring in new nucleotides to pair them up. And they're complementary. Remember, if the old DNA has a T, it's going to drop off an A nucleotide. And if the next one's a C, it's going to bring in a G. And so it's going to bring complementary base pairs to match up that old strand while it's creating that new strand right beside it. If you look in the image, we're showing that by the blue 
um, strands being the old strands and the yellow strands or golden strands being the new ones that are being created. Again, DNA polymerase is the enzyme that is going to then come in and drop off the nucleotides as it goes along. We see DNA polymerase again, it has a second job that is going to come through and proofread and fix errors. So it doesn't catch all of them, but occasionally when the DNA polymerase is dropping off nucleotides, maybe it dropped off a C instead of a T. And as it proofreads it through, it's going to catch it and go, oh, whoops, let me like fix that. And it helps us with not having as many mistakes. Because remember, this, this, hap this process is really chaotic. It's got a lot going on, a lot of moving parts, and mistakes happen. Again, DNA polymerase is going to be fixing and proofreading as we move through this process. The last part is, is we just have two new strands that break apart and we have two new strands and they separate. I want you to look at these two images. They are made up of the old strand that's blue and the new strand that's gold. And we have two strands and you'll notice that they're half old, half new. We'll talk about that and revisit that term. There's a special, special word that we use with it um, later on in the notes. Again, DNA polymerase is dropping off stuff as helicase continues to move through the strand and unzips it as it goes. Um, so again, helicase does that. DNA drops off the nucleotides, then it goes through and it proofreads, and then eventually we have our two new strands with half old, half new material. Let's practice DNA replication. This actually is going to be one of the easiest things in this lesson because we've actually already learned it. You already know your base pairs. You know that adenine pairs with thymine and guanine pairs with cytosine. Remember apples and trees and cars and garages. So we're just going to go through and we know that if A is in the original strand, the first nucleotide to be dropped by the DNA polymerase is going to be T. If T is the next nucleotide, we're going to drop an A. C, we're going to drop a G and so forth going through using our base pair rules until we've completed the whole strand. Now, the number one thing that people get, um, they don't align the letter right underneath and then they get off track and then their answer is wrong. So be careful to make sure that you don't skip a letter um, because then it's not gonna be correct. Double check to make sure that your answer is right with matches with mine and you are going to complete the next two on your own. You can totally do it, you've got this. Now let's do some additional practice. As you can see, this is a much more complex vision of what's going on with DNA um, replication. We have our DNA polymerase um, that's moving through and dropping the nucleotides. And you can see that this process is happening in opposite directions. We call this anti-parallel. That's something that you'll discuss more alongside um, when, we, when you get into higher level biology classes. The main thing though is if I gave you a string of letters and I said, hey, I have this string of letters that's been broken up by DNA helicase and, and DNA polymerase is dropping nucleotides, what are the new nucleotides that would be dropped? What would you do? Okay, you should have gotten A, T, G, C, A, A to match again with that. And remember, they're not identical. They complement each other. So they go with each other following the base pair rules. Now let's get to that term where we talked about half old, half new. Semi-conservative. So semi-conservative replication. DNA replication is semi-conservative. That means that at the end of it, you have two different DNA strands, two full finished DNA strands. In those strands, half of it is the old material, half of it is the brand new built material by the DNA polymerase. We're going to remember that word because the word semi means half and conservative means, again, old. So if something's half old, the implication is that the other half is new. And this, whenever you're asked about the mechanism, this is the mechanism. It doesn't make a complete copy. It's not like we took a picture of DNA and made a whole new copy. And so we have a better, we have an older image and a newer image. This is, again, something where we break apart the DNA and then we duplicate half of it. Um, so that it's half new, half old. So again, make sure you write your notes that DNA replication is semi-conservative. Each daughter DNA uh, molecule has one new strand and one old strand. If you look in the images, in image one, we have one strand of DNA representing the original, which is red. In picture two, the DNA has been split open by DNA um, 
helicase, and DNA polymerase is going to bring in the blue nucleotides to build some new DNA strands. In three, we see the final part where we have two new we have two new DNA strands. But when we look at each of these new strands, we notice that we have some reds and some blues to represent the old strand and the new strand. So there isn't one strand that's older or newer. They're both equally old and new. And that's actually really important. It protects our information and allows us to utilize DNA for longer rather than having to constantly make newer copies. So again, semi-conservative means you have half old, half new. I want you to pause your video here. You are going to um, practice um, knowing again going over these terminologies um, by answering these questions of whether they're true or these statements, whether they are true or false by putting T and F down. Take your time to do that right now. All right, enzymes. So let's talk about enzymes. We've mentioned two of them. In reality, there are so many more that, that you that are um, used in DNA replication, but at the high school level, we're only gonna make you learn about DNA polymerase and DNA helicase. So enzymes are proteins with specific functions. We'll talk about proteins also in lesson three. These are going to, their specific role is actually just to speed up a reaction, to speed up a process. Um, and again, this is what we call a catalyst um, that again, you'll learn more about this in chemistry, but catalyst again, helps speed up. Um, and it, the two ones we need to know are DNA helicase and DNA polymerase. When you watch videos, you are going to also hear about DNA primase and DNA ligase and all these other ones. I think I remembered learning at least 11 when I was in college, but again, you only need to know these two. Let's define them, all right? You have DNA helicase, which again is separating the DNA strand. We also use the word unzipping. And DNA polymerase has two jobs. It both brings in the new nucleotides and drops them off, and then it also comes back and proofreads and fixes errors. Make sure you have that copied in there. If you look over here at the video that we're watching, we're watching these enzymes. Um, the first blue one is the helicase that's unzipping um, the DNA, and then you also have um, some of these other enzymes coming in. As I said before, there's lots of them, not just the two that you need to know, but they're coming in here and they're adding the polymerases to create these two new strands. All right. Very last part that we've got to do. Last practice. I want you to write in your own words, helicase and DNA polymerase, if you couldn't copy down the exact definitions we've given you. So try to use different terms, try to explain it differently, but in it, in your own words, you're going to remember it better. Congratulations. We have finished this lesson. I think that you're going to do great with it. Remember that half of it, you sort of already know. All you've got to do is, is you now have to um, remember the specific steps, the specific questions that we asked about DNA replication, semi-conservatives, and also the two enzymes that we need to know. You're going to do amazing. Have a great day.